Math 2415, Calculus 3, Section 13.5, Curl and Divergence, Video 2 of 6. In the previous video, we introduced the concept of curl, gave a definition for it, both in terms of the del uh, operator vector, if you will, partial x, partial y, partial z, and without it, but the without it was just a difference of, months of a bunch of first order derivatives, partial derivatives. And remembering the particular order is a little bit inconvenient because it seems somewhat random. However, this gimmick will help us calculate curl each time. In this video, I'd like to show a consequence or a theorem involving curl. You see the theorem on the board behind you and the consequences of that theorem. The theorem is pretty straightforward. The curl of the gradient of any scalar field is zero, the zero vector. In other words, take any vector of three dimensions, excuse me, take any function of, of three variables, f, x, y, z, uh, find its gradient, so partial x, partial y, partial z, and then find the curl of that, and you'll always get the zero vector. And we'll see the consequence of this, why this is kind of handy uh, when we're talking about vector fields and conservative vector fields. But to prove this is pretty straightforward, you just have to chase down the definitions. The curl of any vector field, gradient or otherwise, is the del operator as a vector cross whatever the vector field is you're finding the curl of. Well, the del operator is partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, partial with respect to z. Cross. Well, what's the gradient? The gradient says give me a scalar function and I'll make a vector field out of it by taking partial of f with respect to x. Well, let's just, yeah, partial of f with respect to y, partial of f with respect to z. And let's find that cross product by doing the same thing we normally do with cross products. Write the second vector's components underneath the first vector's components, partial of f with respect to x, partial of f with respect to y, partial of f with respect to z, and then find a cross product by using two by two determinants. Don't forget the middle one has a negative in front. In this case, we're taking partial derivatives of partial derivatives, so stay very, very focused, which is what I'm about to do carefully. Just gotta check something real quick. All right, so let's start with the x component of the curl of this cross product. Cover up the x components, partial derivatives. Partial of this, Partial with respect to y, but partial with respect to z. That'd be the second partial of f with respect to y and then with respect to z. Minus the other direction. Partial with respect to z of the partial with respect to y. So second partial derivative, where we take the partial with respect to z first, followed by the partial with respect to y. Now, you may notice that these two mixed partial derivatives are equal according to Clairaut's theorem. So assuming that we have a continuous uh, second derivatives, because we need all the derivatives to be continuous. As we continue taking our uh, determinants, you'll notice the same thing in every component. If we take the second component's determinant by covering up the second component's, uh, let me try that again. If we find the com second component of the cross product by covering up the second component's of the two vectors and doing the negative of the determinant, which is like doing it in reverse. Reverse would be partial with respect to z of the partial with respect to f. So second partial with respect to z first and then with respect to x minus the main diagonal, which is still a second derivative, but it would be partial z first and then partial, I think I wrote this one backwards. Partial, yeah, partial x first and then partial z the other way would be partial z first and then partial x, but those are equal mixed partial derivatives. They're going to be zero. And by the time we get to the third one, it's going to be the same thing. Partial with respect to i, and then with respect to y, then with respect to x. So partial y, partial x, minus other way, partial x, partial y. And all we get are three differences of mixed partial derivatives that are equal. YZZY equal, XZZX equal, YXXY equal. These are all equal to zero, this is the zero vector. So it's a pretty quick proof. The hardest part is just making sure that you write down everything clearly. 
All right, but what does this get us? Well, let's erase the proof and talk about what this gets us. If you are a conservative vector field, we'll say capital F is conservative. Well, let's do a uh, chain of implications here. If we have a conservative vector field, that implies that there exists a scalar function f such that the gradient of, excuse me, such that vector field f is equal to the gradient of scalar field lowercase f. Using those uh, symbolic logic operators I showed you guys in class, there exists a scalar function f such that the, the vector field is equal to the gradient of the scalar function. Well, this implies that the curl of capital F vector field is equal to the curl of the gradient of F, but our theorem says this is equal to the zero vector. So if we put together the beginning and the end, we come up with another theorem. If vector field F is conservative, then the curl of vector field F is equal to zero. Now be careful, this doesn't give us a means to conclude your conservative, because it starts with conservative, doesn't end with conservative. However, you can always take the contrapositive of an implication, meaning we can turn it around in reverse and say the opposite, essentially. So in other words, this statement implies that if the curl is not zero, In other words, if this didn't happen, then this couldn't have happened either. Then F is not conservative. Because if it were conservative, we could conclude that the curl is zero, but the curl is not zero, so we can't conclude it's conservative. We conclude it's not. So we can use the curl to answer the question, are you not conservative? If your curl is not zero, then you are not conservative. For example, let's take the vector field F which takes the point x, y, z, and assigns to it the vector whose first component is x, z, whose second component is x, y, z, and whose third component is negative y squared. And our goal is to show that vector field f is not conservative. Well, using this theorem, all we have to do to show its curl is not identically zero. So we're gonna start by taking the curl of f which we can think of as the del operator vector cross f. Let's just go ahead and set it up. Our del operator is partial x, partial y, partial z. Our f components are xz, xyz, and negative y squared. And now we have to do is calculate the correct two by two determinants for the X component function of the cross product, we can cover the X components and calculate the determinant, meaning partial derivative minus partial derivative. Partial derivative of negative Y squared with respect to Y is negative 2Y minus partial derivative of XYZ with respect to Z is XY. So nothing we can do there. Comma. Then for the second component function of the cross product, we can cover the second components of the individual vectors and find the, de the negative of the determinant, so we just do the diagonal products in reverse. The off diagonal, partial of z, excuse me, partial of xy with respect to z is x, minus partial of negative y squared with respect to x. I think I said something wrong a second ago. Partial of xz with respect to z is x minus partial of negative y squared with respect to x. Well, that's just zero. And then for the third component function of the cross product, we just cover the third components of the vectors and find the two by two determinant, which in this case is the difference of partial derivatives. Partial derivative of xyz with respect to x is yz minus the partial derivative of xz with respect to y, which is zero. So our curl is the vector negative 2y minus xy comma x comma yz. So 
That's not equal to the zero vector. Don't get me wrong. There are values of x, y, and z that make it equal to the zero vector. Uh, if, x, if y were zero and x were zero, that would be sufficient because it would kill off all the components. But we don't know anything of the sort. So in general, this is not the zero vector. Therefore, f is not conservative. So if we were doing a line integral, we cannot apply the uh, fundamental theorem of line integrals to it. All right, so yeah, that's, that's one nice thing about curl. It's not the only nice thing, but one nice thing is if you take the curl of a vector field, here's our big conclusion. If you take the curl of a vector field and you don't get the zero vector, then your vector field is not conservative to begin with. 